um, the reason that I, I really wanted to connect with you and connect with other veterans is I wanted to see their mindset. You know, I wanted to see where they're at because what the school has done for me, Cambridge College has done for me, is it has allowed me to go from that crazy lifestyle of restaurant industry um, and it allowed me to slow down. Hey, slow down, write some papers, get educated amongst very high professionals and just do good, man. Um, but in doing so, you're going you're gonna to figure out your brain is going to start to uh, become awake. You're going to become awake and you're going to meditate and you're going to do things. You're going to start breathing more in a, in a way where you're alive and we are alive out here. And it's, it's disheartening because not everyone, you know, people are alive, but they're not alive. You know, they're, they're living, but you're not awake, man. You know, it's like, you're just part of the system. So let me ask you this, that um, in terms of, you know, all that you've been through and the skills that you gained as a veteran, how did you feel like those uh, further enhanced, like your education? Because, you know, I'm a big believer that we, we gather a whole lot of skills from a whole lot of different places, not just from an institution or a school but we get them from everywhere in life. How do you feel like, you know, being an active duty and how did that, how did that mesh with, with your education? How did that work for you? So in doing so, it, like, like what I said before, um, it, it allowed me to slow down my, my mental thinking um, way too in too many times, um, veterans' minds are always active. And what I mean active is like, we're always on high alert. So it's like, not only are we like stressed out, but we're like, we're tired. But psychologically, like um, unconsciously, mm -hmm. subconscious tired. And that goes with like the things that we're actually paying attention to. That's why a lot of veterans are numbing themselves with different drugs, alcohol, marijuana, whatever, you know, is, is, is available out there. And that's why you see them a lot in the streets. And that's why a lot of them are homeless. Um, so in, in, in doing so and in responding in, in what you had asked, it's, it's I guess, overcoming the, the aspect and utilizing the tools that like the school, like for me, like Cambridge College, what it did for me, it helped me slow down and it helped me write and it helped me um, integrate um, socialistically with other fellow students where I recognize, all right, I'm not the only one that, because one, the school itself, it, it, it's a dynamic. It, there, there's a cultural, there's a cultural uh, diversity that is unique to going to other schools around the area, and that's that's what makes it number one. Mm -hmm. Because it, the, one, the being affordable and having the cu cultural diversity of being able to speak with other students and collaborating in a in a way where it's it matters. Because you get, you get to really like talk to others and go, hey man, have you seen this too? Oh, you're working three jobs as well? Oh, well, we're, we're here. We're trying to create this paper, you know, like let, let's make things work, you know? And those are the things that you're constantly surrounded by as opposed to um, attending the other schools where it's like glamored and you have that 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 status of like oh yeah i'm going to harvard i'm going to mit well i'm going to Cam cambridge college and you know what all of my professors they studied in all of those schools and you know what i'm in a pool of all of that and it's great and you know what it's not about where you go it's what you make out of it it's an education it's you know what right now 
I took three classes, one from a professor from MIT, one a professor from Harvard, and one a professor from Yale. What do you, and what do you make out of that? You know, you create a brilliant mind. And it's, it's those aspects of just like speaking to other veterans. And if I were talking to my team right now, and if they were here, I would say it's what you make out of it. Um, 100% it, it's not like, um, like I'm here to say, hey, you know, um, these are the things that is that, you know, like that you need for an education. It's what are you looking for? What is your purpose? What's what's going on within your life? Because right now, this wellness and health degree will help you in that manner. Um, I, I spoke with you um, before going to Cambridge College, and I don't know if you remember this, but it was like at like seven o'clock in the morning. And um, you're like, Rich, let me tell you, get on the wave. You're on a wave. Get on the wave. There's a wave right now. It's a very, very big one. Get on the wave. And I feel like I'm surfing the wave right now. And in doing so, just being, a, just I'm accumulating so much perspective, you know, where I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for life. Um, I'm grateful for being here as a veteran, entering the, the, the wellness and health degree. My, my mindset wasn't 100%. I, I, you know, there was thoughts of, uh, and I don't want to scare you or anything, but there was thoughts of like suicide and, and, and things of that nature. Um, so those are the things that I really wanted to connect with other veterans and, and say, hey, um, this school will provide you the tools with meditation, with bettering yourself, with understanding, just and just being a normal human being, being a, a normal citizen, coming back to the United States of America and saying, I could walk the streets in the United States of America because th this is these are the streets that I fought for. This is a land that of opportunity. Um, then okay, great. Um, but right now it's 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 at a level where there 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 needs to be a lot of overcoming because we're just for me I feel like I'm out here and I'm just one. But understanding and talking to you, we're not just one. We're we're many, but we're we're few, and uh, we're underrepresented. You know, one of the things that, that always struck me about you, Rich, in terms of your passion for making a difference, and I think it made you very open, like you had the opportunity that you worked with Betsy and Eat to Thrive, and you made a huge impact in terms of her business and the way that she went about doing things there. So even though you were in the position of being the intern and you learned a lot, clearly, but the impact that you also, the, what you brought, the gifts that you brought to her and the community that she has about working with kids and working with people, helping them to, to eat better and to understand the value of nutrition and how that could even affect things like your mental health. You know, I think that was uh, amazing. And I feel like you really are one of those people that took full advantage of what was out there in front of you. You know, and it's okay because we all have a process and a path to go through. And where we all end up, who knows exactly. But I would be willing to bet very large sums of money uh, the number of people that you have impacted along the way, which I think is really, really, that's what's about for me anyways. Absolutely. Like, um, I don't want to quote, uh, I'll quote Tupac on this. He says, uh, I won't be able to change you, but I'll be able to spark the mind just give you that little mm. neurological spark that neuron spark where it says hey oh man like um maybe you know my brain wasn't on 100 percent. now i see things a little bit clearer you know um 
maybe I was in a dark place and now, um, you know, I, I've been connecting with friends who, who, who were in, in dark places and now they're connecting more with their family and now they're talking and they're speaking and it's like, that makes me happy. Whereas before, when I was talking to them before, it's, it's it was a, a an issue of just like, hey, like, how are you doing? It's like, oh man, nothing's going well for me. This type of stuff, and it's just like um, the problem is, is it's not the negative um, energy issue. It's it's helping each other going in the process forward because it's like how can you help someone leaving them behind it's like extending your hand to reach for them and help them but realize that you you're drowning yourself and then letting them go without actually putting in the effort of pushing forward you know, we need to push forward together. The more we work together as a nation, the better that this country will run, at least for the United States, outside countries. I mean, I don't know, there's, there's other things going on, but yeah, you know, um, just much love to, 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 to everyone out there. And, um, you know, just because, yeah, we, we don't know what people are going through at the end of the day, you know, everyone may seem like they're going through, you know, like they're fine, but at the end of the day, wellness and health play a key nutrition, exercise, meditation, that whole eight figures uh, spectrum of just like balancing all those things and just handling it. Uh, but, you know, life throws us different variables again with, um, I don't know, it, it, the test, it's a test. So it's, it's handling those tests um, accordingly and um, helping people along the way. Um, and I, what I want to do um, eventually when I get that master's degree um, is help other veterans um, with this crisis that's going on and alleviate a lot of that stress that's going on in, 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 the, in the VA right now. And the VA, the VA is so fucked up, Barbara. I'm sorry to curse, but you know. Yeah, um, it is what it is. Yeah, it's 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 like it's. I read something. It's like behind fifteen years on the normal expectancy of like running like a normal hospital. And I'm like, no, it can't how, be. How? 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 We're spending so much money on this, and you're telling me that you know more than twenty three veterans are ending their lives every single day. How is that? What? Right. And so that's, you know, this is, I feel like this is the stuff. It's like, you know, that there are some people, there are some people who are veterans who can't talk about these things. And there are other people who are not veterans and not aware, or maybe even aware, but they choose not then to talk about these things. And it's like, we can't, this in my, my feeling is like, we have men and women going to war going to fight for us every single day so that we can have the privileges that we do. And you know, they're not equally distributed. But what we can't, it, to me, it feels like kind of the very worst case scenario is you can't then shortchange those people in particular of everything that they have risked to be able to do the job so the rest of us can live. No, that's not right. You know, and so I feel like we have to keep in conversation because I believe there are a lot of things that can happen even before, you know, I, I don't remember if you were one of that, those groups, but um, you know, I, I teach the self-care class. Right. But at the same time, I would teach the class on unequal treatment 
disparities in health and human services. And I would say to students at the time, it's like, it's not a coincidence. I teach those things at usually at the same time on purpose because we need that large scale change. We need to find a way to, to dismantle some of these systems and rebuild. But at the same time, we also need to be able to find ways that we can learn how to take better care of ourselves in the process of that change happening. If we're waiting, we're going to wait a really long time and we don't have that time. That's not a luxury for a lot of people. Yeah. God, we've seen that, especially, you know, with, with COVID and everything else. But I feel like, you know, it's with people like yourself and so many other, other students and faculty and other caring people in, in society that are saying, uh-uh, time has come. You know, change is here right now. What are we going to do and how are we going to make it happen? Not whether or not it's coming. It's like, no, no, it's here. And how, what are we going to do about it? How are we going to handle it? Um, 70%, you know, it's, it's, it's the, we want it. I, I want this. Like you, nothing is going to stand in my path and I will overcome and I'm going to take this degree and I'm going to do so much good with it. And that fire is what's what's keeping Cambridge College alive.